Kevin Holland, this was his fifth fight, taking on Jacare, his fifth fight of 2020. But I got to tell you, he went under my radar a little bit. I didn't fully know who Kevin Holland was. I've heard the name. How are you not again? I follow the sport. Boom, he's up five times. This was number five. I didn't know everything there was to know about Kevin until he walked out. Once I saw him, I go, yep, saw your last fight. No, I know who you are. But they call him Big Mouth. I'd like to start with that right there. I don't agree with that nickname. And I'll tell you why. Big Mouth is fighting terms. And not if somebody calls you, hey, you're a Big Mouth. That doesn't mean that now you have to fight them. If the guy that, the guy that says it is looking to fight you, think about that. If you guys ever call him one a Big hey, you got a Big Mouth. That means you're up, so you're pissed off, right? I don't like the nickname for Kevin Holland because he is so charismatic. Yes, he talks a lot, but he does it from a very playful standpoint. I find him, I, I find that he gets away with it. I don't find it disrespectful. I don't even find it mean. I find it entertaining. I find it funny, but he does it with a lot of charm. He does it very different. It's it's every, everybody's talking these days. Oh, that's the way to market yourself. You gotta go to eh. There's more to it than that. That that that's a lazy approach to believe that. And Holland brings in something a little bit different. Now I want to break down the match, but I feel as though I have to address this whole big mouth business to start with because I don't think it's a fair moniker. I don't love that moniker. And I'm into this guy. Look, Jacques Array is a bad night out. And I haven't loved Jacques Array's strategies, particularly as of late, because he used to have an urgency within plan A which is get my hands on this guy, get this guy to the ground, bring him into my world. I've practiced, and I'm powerful, and I'm comfortable enough, and I'm good enough athlete that I can go to my plan B, but I will not look at plan B until plan A's options are exhausted. I don't see Jacare doing that anymore. I'm being very critical, but I'm being very critical of a great fighter who I have followed. I followed Jacare back in his grappling days. I watched him and Damian Maya. Yeah, in an IBJJF world final match. Man, that's how far I go back with this guy. So it was kind of easy for me to see what's been changing. Now, here's the good news. If your team Jacare, if he gets this Holland guy down, Holland's in big trouble. That was kind of the belief. That's still Jacare. And Holland is still this, some guy they're calling a big mouth. I mean, that's the story going into this fight. Okay. Fight breaks out. Holland comes to the ring. He's dancing. He's talking. I think he was doing some singing. But to come back and to try to prove my point that it is not disrespectful and it is not mean-spirited like a lot of guys, when he got in the ring and he started dancing, Jacare smiled and Jacare started dancing. It was one of these things where this Holland guy like just kind of put you in a good mood. I would love to see this guy in a packed arena. If he can get his opponent to start dancing, imagine there was 10,000 people there. The opponent's going to be the last guy to dance with you. He would have had 10,000 people dancing. Kevin Holland could have broke out a dance party in the middle of a UFC. I really think that. This guy was captivated. He had one of these personalities that drew you to him. Okay, fight starts. Jacare takes him down. Holland scrambles up. They're back on their feet. Jacare's disciplined. Disciplined to that plan A we talked about. Got him up, put him back down again, and this time he kept him there. Here's where the surprise came. Holland started talking to Jacare. You could hear it because of the, the, the settings of the pandemic. And then he throws up a submission. He throws up a triangle on Jacare. Now, would if, he, if he would have finished that triangle, which he then transitioned to an armbar, both missed. But if, just if, he would have submitted Jacare Souza, we're having a totally another conversation. The mere fact that he got close and had the courage to go for it, I think opened a lot of eyes that, hey, man, this guy's pretty comfortable on the ground. And ultimately, he throws a strike, hit Jacare right in the, right, the ultimate place you want to hit a guy is right on this chin. You want to turn it, there's a little function right here for between your jawbone and your ear. It's a little gap that a human has. You want to close that gap. You hit the jaw so hard that that gap closes, that's what puts a guy to sleep. That's the ultimate place. The next ultimate place is arguable. It's very arguable. Do you want the temple? Do you want behind the ear? And I will tell you where Holland went, which is within the argument places, is right on the top of the head, not the forehead, not the two head area, the eyebrow area, right on the very top. Picture this if you missed the match. Holland is down. He's on his back. 
Jacare creates a little space, Holland says something to him, and then sits up and cracks him. Now you have to understand this because this is creativity at its finest points. There is no coach in the world, in any MMA gym to ever exist, that brings the team in one day and says, okay guys, I want you to sit on your butt and wait for the top guy to create space. Then I want you to say something to him and crack him right here. You'll knock him out. Now, that, that He made it up. Joe Rogan, John Anik, Daniel Cormier, three of the finest announcers in the history of sports, let alone this sport. They don't, have a, they don't know what to call it. I've had a day. I don't know what to call it. That's not a move. Kevin Holland made that up. When you have guys that can make things that they can see it and then do it in live action, it's rare and it's scary and it's impressive and it, it's something to celebrate. Not to mention little skinny Big Mouth here generated enough power from the most precarious position I have seen to result in a knockout. Right, if I was to bring Clayton Hires in here right now, top boxing coach on earth, and he was to tell you how to generate knockout power. In a million years, he's never going to tell you to sit on your butt and wing one. Kevin Holland sat on his butt create, creatively, winged one at Jacques Ray while talking trash to him and put him out. There's a little bit more to this than just an impressive performance by, by Holland. There really is, guys. One week ago. 60 gets announced. 60 athletes within the UFC are going to be cut. Five weeks ago, Scott Coker actually cut 30 guys. So 90 athletes, all the way up to Yoel Romero, 90 athletes who we know and who we are invested in on some level are gone. So what does that mean for the fan? It means we have to start over. It, what do you do now? What do you do now if you're Coker, if you're Dana White, you took this product that people have seen, that they are familiar with, that they want to see again, and you do away with them. You put yourself up in a tough position, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, a guy like Kevin Holland comes out. That's why you don't ever miss these shows. New stars are born. Jamal Hill a week ago, by example, that's why you don't miss these shows. And when you want to talk about what's next, and in all fairness, that's all we ever really want to talk about, what's next. What I want to see, what I want to see for Holland is I want to see Darren Till. Holland is not getting a world title fight. Even if that division is in an interesting position now with Adesanya leaving it. And though he hasn't been stripped with any success against Blahovich, it's not coming back. So you, a couple opportunities now open up. Not only can one guy go fight for it, you can have two if it's a vacated title. Even with that, Kevin Holland is not going into a world title fight. But Darren Till would be a mega fight, and that would be a mega step up the card, and most likely that would be a main event. That would then put him in a five-round atmosphere, which would answer a lot of questions. Kevin Holland answered, how can he do with a world-class grappler? If he can answer, how can I do with a world-class striker, and you like the answer, that will move Kevin Holland a meaningful distance closer to his goal, which is a championship fight. 